Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? Had a late night last night. I slept a little late today. That's why I'm late uploading. All right, let's get into this. We're going to be reading out of Psalm 97 1. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt, melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. I figured reading the whole psalm would be the best way to do it since we started in verse 1. Great psalm. Causes for disquietude. There are none so long as this blessed sentence is true. On the earth, the Lord's power, the Lord's power are readily controls. Sorry. I'm completely messed this up. Causes for disquietude. There are none so long as this blessed sentence is true. On earth, the Lord's power as readily controls the rage of the wicked as the rage of the sea. His love as easily refreshes the poor with mercy as the earth with showers. Majesty gleams in flashes of fire amid the tempest horrors, and the glory of the Lord is seen in its grandeur in the fall of empires and the crash of thrones. In all our conflicts and tribulations, we may behold the hand of the divine king. And that's what all that above there was talking about. God is God. He sees and hears all our troubles, all our tears. Soul, forget not, mid thy pains, God o'er all forever reigns. In hell, evil spirits own with misery his undoubted supremacy. When permitted to roam abroad, it is with a chain at their heel. The bit is in the mouth of behemoth, and the hook in the jaws of Leviathan. Death's darts are under the Lord's lock and the graves of prisons have divine power as their warder. The terrible vengeance of the judge of all the earth makes friends, sorry, makes fiends cower down and tremble, even as dogs in the kennel fear the hunter's whip. Fear not death, nor Satan's thrusts. God defends who in him trusts. Soul, remember in thy pains, God o'er all forever reigns. In heaven, none doubt the sovereignty of the King Eternal, but all fall on their faces to do him homage. Angels are his courtiers, the redeemed his favorites, and all delight to serve him day and night. May we soon reach the city of the great King. For this life's long night of sadness, he will give us peace and gladness. Soul, remember in thy pains, God o'er all forever reigns. <laughs> A very poetic speech. But what does it all mean? No matter what happens, God is in control, period. If I had to sum it up in a single sentence, that's it. No matter what, God is in control. No demon does the evil that he does unless God allows him to do it. No event happens in any part of the world, in any part of time, in any person's life, unless God wills it to be so. No path is walked, no food is eaten, no trip taken, no battle fought, no death. 
is revealed. No day of death reached unless God is in control of it. I was taught at the early age that there are accidents. Sometimes they're just things we do that are outside of God's control. I've since come to the very, very blunt con con confirmation in his word that he is in full control. Otherwise, how can he be God? When you watch all the superhero movies, Thor supposed to be a god and all these other guys and they're all dying, you know, they're all dying in the movies. Okay, well, how are you a god if you're dying? You were not a god. How are you a god if there are things that happen outside of your control? You were not a god. You're just a mortal being. Our God is in full control of all things. Demons hate him, yet bow before him. Humans who decided to choose the path of evil have no idea who he is, no understanding of him, and yet they will be made to bow too. No event in world history, not a single one, has unfolded without our Lord being there, governing every second of it. We as believers, we as children of God, can trust that he has full control over everything that's happening in each one of our lives and in the world around us and in the universe we live in. If he created it, is it, is it not heresy to think that he can't control it? Of course he can. He has full control over everything that's happening. What a blessing it is. To know that God has all of this in the palm of his hand. And then we go through our lives, our individual lives, and these events happen. And when you go at it with the knowledge of what we have discovered here, of what we know to be true, you realize Everyone else is freaking out because this seems like a terrible thing, but I know God is in control, so this this was supposed to happen this way. This was supposed to unfold this way. That's an amazing thing. To know that this is how it's all supposed to play out, and to know that every one of these things leads to something greater, You take five people, one of them saved. All five in their individual lives are in one way or another interwoven with the other. The other four will not be saved. They won't do it. They just will not accept it. And the Lord knows that. But one is, and the Lord knows that. And so the Lord uses the other four as interactions with his child, with the, the fifth one to grow them, to bring them about, to chastise them, to correct them, and to get them ready for heaven, and ultimately to be a blessing to them. We look at all these evil things that are happening and think, this is terrible, how can God allow this? Not realizing God is allowing it because it's for our betterment. It was no accident that the people that are in power right now got there. That was on purpose. And what does it cause people to do? Look a different direction. Pay more attention. Stop taking things for granted. Look at, at how people have changed. I believe the, the reward for that is going to be Trump is going to get in again. But what comes after that is going to be vastly different. That's for a different video. That's for next Wednesday's video. <laughs> but you can know that nothing... Nothing is outside of God's knowledge and control. He knows every drop of dew that evaporates off the grass. He knows every baby bird that falls out of the nest. He knows every leaf that turns colors in the fall. He knows every single process, every minute detail that happens in this creation. And if that's the case, and the Bible gives those examples, the Bible says 
if that's the case, he also knows everything. He knows all the hairs on our head are counted. Mine's been in a deep state of subtraction here the last few, so many years. But he counts, the very hairs of our head are counted. Because there are some follicles that we don't even know are going to grow hair. And he knows about them because he created us. The very hairs of our head. The day we're going to die, it's not accidental. It's not anything. He knows because he's appointed that day that our life will end here. If it's by car wreck, if it's by motorcycle accident, it, either way, it's been designated for us to go on that day. That'll be our day to stop to li stop living here and go home. And he knows all about that and all the intimate details concerning it. That's astounding. What that causes me personally to do is to have more confidence in what I'm doing. To live more with a purpose and to not worry or stress about the things of daily life. But instead to walk in faith, believe in him and trust in him, look to him no matter what's happening. And know that no matter what, what he has des designated to happen is going to happen. And it will happen exactly the way he says it's going to. This is how you know you can trust God. And this is how you know you can trust him to keep his word. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing praises under your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. Thank you that you have full control over everything. That you know exactly how everything is going to fold. I don't know what's going to happen 10 minutes from now. I don't know what's going to happen this evening. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. But you have already seen it. And you saw it from beginning to end before anything ever, ever began. You knew already how all this was going to play out. And what this gives me is it gives me a greater sense and a greater understanding, even in this le least degree possible, but a greater understanding in your providence and in your omnipotent power. You are omnipotent and omniscient. No one else can make such boasts. No other God, quote unquote, can make such a boast. But you can because you are the one true God. And this is amazing, because if we know you're in control, if we know that nothing that happens is outside of your control, what confidence does that give us? Solomon made a very interesting statement. Eat your bread and drink your wine, for God has already accepted your works. That, that sticks with me and makes me think that we already know what's been put in our path. Or you already know what's on our path and have already accepted what we're going to do, which means even though we have haven't even been born yet to you know 2,000 years ago 6,000 years ago before I had ever never been born you already knew what I was going to do what a blessing to know it's already been de dealt with it's already been taken care of we know that we're saved and we're saved to the uttermost as the Bible says because at the moment of salvation even though we're living out this life at the moment of salvation it's all been done amazing absolutely amazing <clears throat> this causes me to trust you more because I know I don't have to worry about these things because if anything comes up that, that causes me to stumble or causes me to, to step back and go whoa wait a minute this is a terrible event I already know there's something that's good, good that's going to come out of it because your word says so this causes us to trust your word because it tells us about all these things it causes us to trust you Father make us to trust you Make us to believe. Help our unbelief. Make us to walk in confidence and truth. To live our lives to glorify you. And to learn more and more how much better it is. With you as our God. Instead of living a life without him. Um, how amazing is that you even govern the lives of the unbeliever. You even govern the lives of the evil. You even govern the lives... You govern the lives of every entity in creation. They think that we think that they get to go around and do all these things and have all this fun and we get to miss out and they get rich and happy and all that. But what we don't realize and what we've been taught incorrectly 
is that you're in control of their lives too. What they're enjoying is all they're going to get. They're going to have their good life. And then like the rich man and Lazarus story, he's going to have his comforts. You had your good life and your comforts and now you're in torment. You govern every single part of your creation. Father, we glorify you for that because it is incredible to know that you created all this in all its intricacy and you are in full control and understanding of it. That should cause us to be in more awe of you and your power and to maybe just a little bit more understand how much more love you may have for us than we realize. Because for you to create something so intricate so complicated and govern every aspect of it. And without this, we can't live. And you're keeping this going because of who we, who we are. We need this environment to live in. What else have you done because of your love? What else is out there? What else is waiting when we get to heaven because of your love? Father, I shudder to even try to grasp this because my limited understanding can't but it just goes to show us you created all this just for us to to get us to a point where we could be saved what's waiting after this because we haven't even been out of our own galaxy we haven't even been out of our own solar system and there is a vast expanse out there what else have you made? What else have you created? What else are you doing? And I so look forward to finding out. Thank you, Father, for these wonderful blessings you've given us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love, your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. I am awestruck because if you stop and think, he created this massive, massive universe that only has one inhabitable planet in all of it. And that's amazing to even consider. And he keeps life going on this one little planet. Perfect conditions. A perfect biosphere for life to propagate if he built all this this I mean this expanse is huge the Voyager 1 is still going and they're still getting messages back from it and Voyager 2 some of the things they've passed through out there are just like they passed through one part where it was just fire they passed through a place where it was just nothing but fire that they were in another one where the density of space got less and it was able to pick up immense speed. They're still going and sending back data. He made this gigantic universe from our perspective. It's massive. From his, it's a speck of dust in his palm. And he governs everything that goes on here. If he did all that for this one little planet, what else is what else has he done? What else is waiting? The Bible says it has not entered into the mind of man what God has laid up for him in heaven. What's waiting for us there? If this was just while we got saved, if this is just while we lived out this life, what else is waiting? I am so excited to see it. And then to glorify him and praise him for it. Because he is the one true God. He is the creator of all things. And we can trust that he has full control over our lives. As, even though he has control over everyone else's life, especially those that are his, he has complete control and runs this and works it out for our betterment. What an amazing thing. What an incredible God to love us so much, to care for us like this. We worry about food and clothes and AC and, and you know, pay, making the house payment and the car payment, keeping the cars going and everything, mowing the grass. And, and yet he is... He is taking care of things, doing things in us that are beyond our understanding, so far beyond, we can't believe it. What an awesome God we have. Give him glory today and give him thanks that you have this life because it could be vastly different than this. Vastly different. 
I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.